What's up, Doc Mike? Today's topic for May 9, 2021. What should I do when I feel like I'm not giving or doing enough? Thank you, Johns Hopkins Medicine. Hello, I'm Carolyn Fowler from the Office of Wellbeing, and I'm here today with my colleague Karen Swartz from the Department of Psychiatry. Hello, Karen. Hi, it's good to see you. And in this video, we're going to continue our conversation about how do we provide support in action. We've talked a bit about the theory, but now we want to think about how do we just, just get going to actually deliver support both to our colleagues and to ourselves. So Karen, the question I'm bringing to you today is one I'm hearing a lot and, and observing a lot, which is people feeling that they're just not doing enough. And as much as you and I both know how amazingly our colleagues have been caring for patients and for, for the work that we do together in this organization, there are many people who keep saying things like, I feel so guilty. Like I work all day, but then on the way home, I'm thinking about everything I didn't get to do, the way I failed that patient or I didn't get through my to-do list. That's a lot of pressure to put on ourselves. What, what's, what are your thoughts about that? Well, first, I think we are doing that. I think the more exhausted you get, the more likely you are to get caught up in these negative thoughts and just be swimming in them. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a healthy, natural instinct to develop something that's like cognitive behavioral therapy, where you actually, when you're beating yourself up, you take a moment to say, oh, wait, what am I thinking? Or I've gone to the negative again, or different ways to uh, you know, just sort of think about the, what you're thinking and challenge it. You know, I don't know if you've ever tried to do that yourself. I have, I mean, I think the challenge is to actually have enough presence to notice what you're thinking in the first place. Mm -hmm. I use a little three C's, you know me, I always have some acronym for something. Um, so the three C's I use are, I wanna catch my thought. So if I, if I notice the thought is like, well, you know, you're just not good enough or you failed or why can't you be more efficient? Whatever that is, I wanna catch that thought because I wanna think about, well, is this thought and the emotion, the emotion that goes along with it, is that is that true? I want I want to check it. So, you know, the fact that I didn't get the 99th and 100th thing done today doesn't mean that I failed with all the other 98, right? It, and so it's like, well, let's think about it. Is that really true? If somebody else said that about themselves, would you wouldn't you just say, hang on a second, is is that really true? And then when I can check the the content or the, you know, the, how factual this is. I can then maybe change the way I think about it. So it's not, it's not that I'm trying to delude myself into thinking I'm, you know, I'm good at my job when I'm not good at my job, but, but it's, I'm, I'm being sort of more compassionate with myself and more understanding with myself. And I think that's certainly something that, that I would hope to bring to colleagues. And, you know, we always say, Karen, we're much tougher on ourselves than we are with other people. Right. So. Right. So if you're catching a thought and then you're checking it, and then you can change it. I mean, that's the whole idea behind CBT is that if you actually challenge thoughts, you can lead to feelings improving mm -hmm. because there is something about swimming in the most negative that doesn't help anything. Sometimes it really just can get someone into a spiral. And just something to know is if you're in the middle of something like depression or serious anxiety or PTSD symptoms, sometimes you can't do this. Your thoughts are too negative or they get distorted. And that would be a sign that you might want to speak to someone and say, I can't even challenge myself. I know that I did 98 things, you know, using your great example. Why am I focused on the two I didn't get done? That's not okay. If I can never think about the 98 I did, I just think about the two. And you know that soundtrack, that 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 really judgy soundtrack about, you know, you're not enough, you're not enough, you're not enough. So occasionally we can stop it. Occasionally we can take a breath or we can just pay attention to it and stop it. But but what if we can't stop it? What if that voice about how we're not doing enough is just relentless and we can't get away from it? Well, I worry when people are just beating themselves up all the time and are really self-critical 
I worry that they might be going through depression because it's a really central part of having depression. And I don't think it's one of the symptoms people know about. They think about, oh, I'm sad or I can't sleep or my appetite's off. That self-critical voice becoming so loud you can't ignore it actually is common. And so that might be a time to say, let me speak to someone. You, know, you could talk to one of the chaplains, you could talk to a close friend, you could talk to someone from my support and say, have other things changed? And not to just decide, well, we're in the middle of COVID. There are too many things being written off right now. Of, we're in the middle of a crisis. So, you know, what do you expect? We need to take care of each other and ourselves a little better than that. Yeah. Well, and I guess, you know, sometimes we don't want to share what we're thinking because we in some ways feel ashamed mm -hmm. or we feel shame and we don't want to share that. But I think there's real value in, in leaning into that and, and being willing to be vulnerable about how we're feeling with other people because they can sometimes see, they can be a mirror to us and see so that we can see the good in ourselves. Um, well, I couldn't agree more, but I also will say as a psychiatrist, there's tremendous stigma still, unfortunately, around getting treatment for medical problems, depression and anxiety. And I think until we challenge that among medical providers, I, I just don't even, we need to do this, right? We need to take care of each other. And maybe this crisis where so many of us might need extra support will help us do that. And that might be a positive thing that comes out of this terrible challenge we're in. Right, because I mean, we, our colleagues are extraordinary, but they're not invincible. And they're not, you know, a, a, an unlimited resource, right? I mean, it's... Well, these are, these are common problems and we know they can be triggered by stress. And right now, everyone working in the medical field, everyone who's part of healthcare is undergoing outrageous levels of stress. And so I think we're all gonna be lucky if we're not facing at least some degree of this. So better to recognize it and get the support you need rather than letting it get to a point that it's really interfering or really causing suffering. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karen. We'll be talking about other strategies that we can use such as self-compassion, kindness and so on. But for today, thank you for your insights, Karen. And thank you everybody for your interest in supporting everybody. Thank you.